Hello and welcome back to the Co-op Monthly, all of my favorite gaming boys and girls. I think we can all agree that 2024 has been a good year for game releases thus far, but I think it's about to get a little bit weird. A lot of the big studios and names have released their major titles already, and besides a few exciting games to look forward to, the rest of the year is kind of a big question mark. So that's why it's important as ever to catch up with all the co-op games that came out last month, all the co-op games coming out next month, and any co-op news in between so you can know when those hidden gems hit the release calendar. Luckily, you're in the right place with the co-op monthly for March, so let's get started. It's been a very busy first quarter of the year, so before things start to slow down a bit, let's take a look at how well or not well this month's games did. We recently put out our own review of The Outlast Trials, definitely check that out by the way. We ultimately felt that this is a great co-op game that isn't really getting its due. The Outlast Trials is currently sitting with a 72 on Open Critic, but on the user score side of things, it's doing quite well for itself as it's garnered a very positive rating on Steam. In general, I think most critics found that there was either not enough content or found that assisting content somewhat repetitive. We don't share that opinion ourselves, but be sure to check out the game for yourself if you're interested. Contra Operation Galuga was meant to be a modern take slash reboot of the franchise, but it doesn't seem like it's quite landed with critics as it's currently sitting with a 73 on Open Critic. In general, it seems like some critics are praising the old school elements it's retained, while others wanted a larger leap forward for the franchise. Regardless, most critics can agree the game is better with friends, so at least they've nailed that aspect. Lightyear Frontier released onto early assets on the 19th, and it was meant to be a big Xbox title as it's a console exclusive apart from its Steam release. Surprisingly, I don't think too many people are playing it. The game is sitting with a strong 80 on Open Critic, but that's only with like 9 critic reviews. While Steam users have it as very positive with a little over 600 reviews. Even so, most people seem to agree this game nails the cozy vibes, even if it just needs a bit more time to develop its system. Other than Power World popping off, we haven't had too many big surprises this year, until now. We did not expect Rise of the Rodent to turn out the way it did. Not only did the game underperform, sitting with a 76 on Open Critic, the co-op is truly a big disappointment. We put out a quick how-to video if you want to learn more, but the gist is multiplayer is relegated to certain missions in the game, not the open world. To make matters worse, you have to play through the mission on your own before you can even tackle it in co-op. A big step back for Team Ninja since they usually nail this kind of thing like they did in Wolong or Neo. Another game not quite hitting the mark is South Park Snow Day, currently sitting with a 63 on Open Critic, a big step down from the previous South Park titles. Most critics seem to agree that this is kind of a bare bones experience with basic combat, simple levels, and not much more. Still, some critics agree that co-op can be fun and very ridiculous, so if you're a big South Park fan, maybe just pick this up when it's heavily discounted. As I alluded to at the top, the month of April is decidedly lacking in any major co-op titles releasing, but it isn't without its sleeper hits and a lot of ports, so we'll keep you on top of them here. Azuv will be hitting early access right around when this video drops on the 3rd of April. It's a co-op card roguelike where you and your friends have to cross a perilous desert. It has a really cool mechanic where you actually lose communication for parts of your journey and have to make decisions apart from each other, something we haven't really seen before. For now, it's only two players, but when it eventually hits 1.0, it will be up to four players. If it looks interesting, you can hop in early or wishlist it on Steam. Inkbound is a turn-based tactical roguelike you can play in solo or up to four players online, coming into 1.0 after a year of early access. It already has a little over 2,000 Steam ratings, putting it at a very positive 91%, so it's one of those hidden gems I was talking about. The game is all about making busted builds, and in co-op you can find a lot of synergy through different classes and abilities. It's certainly on our radar and probably should be on yours too when that 1.0 happens on the 10th. Another game finally making its way into 1.0 is Skier Ritual, a round-based zombie survival first-person shooter you can play with up to four players online. That 1.0 is on the 18th and also includes a launch onto PS5 and Xbox Series consoles with crossplay for both Xbox and PC. This title has been cooking in early access for about a year and a half and has received mostly positive ratings from Steam users in that time. It looks like it's hitting the old school Call of Duty zombie vibes with a mysterious story to solve and easter eggs to find while you survive for as long as you can. Hoping the 1.0 pulls it all together and we see some positive buzz on the 18th. 
Ready Steady Ship is the latest Overcooked Light coming to all consoles and platforms on the 19th. I could be misremembering, but I think this is made by a one-man development team, and I gotta give props because this product looks really impressive. It's only two-player local co-op, however, so if you like past Overcooked titles, it's important to keep that in mind because it's a little bit different than usual. But we love supporting smaller teams, and it doesn't get smaller than that, so consider giving it a try through the demo available on Steam. To finish off the section, I'm going to do a lightning round of notable ports, so let's hit the music and let's see if I can read as fast as possible. Moonglow Bay is getting a PlayStation and Switch port on the 11th. It's a town builder where you play as a fisher, has two-player local co-op, released back in 2021, and had a Ferris 71 on Open Critic when it launched. Grounded is getting a PlayStation and Switch port on the 16th of the month. It's widely considered to be one of the best co-op survival titles available, getting an 83 on Open Critic and retaining an 89% very positive from Steam users even two years post-launch. You can play it in four-player online co-op. Arc Runner is a smaller title, getting a port from PC to all consoles on the 18th after a year post-launch. It doesn't have many reviews, but is a three-player online action roguelike. Last but certainly not least is Sea of Thieves coming over to Team Sony on the 30th after being exclusive to Xbox for six years. That's tons of top quality pirate content to play with up to four players online, take it from the 275,000 Steam user ratings that put it at a 91% very positive. Wait a second, did we just transition into an iconic video game shopping song in the middle of the monthly? Does that mean what I think it means? Yes, that's right, we're here to interrupt the fun for a quick second to tell you about our Patreon. Turns out running a YouTube channel while maintaining full-time jobs and social lives isn't easy, but you can help by supporting us over there. You'll get perks like our monthly newsletter that just went out, the chance to vote on upcoming videos and games we play, and even a 10% off merch code. Seriously, it means a ton if you do decide to support us, so thank you to our patrons, and thank you for watching this very short ad. We have a bit of a stacked news section this month, so let's waste no time and dive into updates on released titles. The Wizard with a Gun team had been teasing an update by unveiling new guns every week, and it's all culminated on the aptly named Bounty of Guns update. This update introduces 50 new guns and a new bounty quest system. I have a soft spot for this game honestly, so I'm hoping they keep these updates rolling and eventually we see an even better version of Wizard with a Gun. Another title that I want to see at its full potential is The Outlast Trials, and thankfully the team at Red Barrels recently unveiled their content roadmap for this year and beyond. We can expect some new special events and MK challenges soon, while the summer will introduce Season 1. This season will bring with it new trials, rigs, amps, and much more. Eventually, they want to introduce a couple new game modes, which I think could really round out the whole experience, so I'm looking forward to hearing more about that hopefully this year. Last year we played a co-op horror game called Deceit 2. It was a ton of fun and we did a whole sponsored stream for it. So if you were at all interested in Deceit 2, you'll be happy to know not only is the game hidden consoles on April 3rd, but it's also going free to play. I think this is a great move for this game as it can be pretty hard to gather 8 of your friends for this, but if you do, you'll likely have a very good time, we definitely did. I'm pretty sure we reported on this at some point, but buried in Sea of Stars Kickstarter page was the mention of an upcoming co-op mode, which obviously sounds amazing, and recently the team teased said mode with this 8 second teaser. Which isn't much, but I've been playing the game myself, and I can tell you co-op would be really, really cool. Hopefully we hear more substantial news on this very soon. Another single player game receiving a co-op mode is Crypt of the Necrodancer. Yeah, this 2015 title just received a pretty sick update adding 8 player online co-op. Not only that, but it also adds a head to head mode and much more. Pretty crazy this game is still receiving updates, but hey, we're not complaining. With the Final Shape expansion only a couple months away now, Destiny 2 unveiled what will likely be their last big update prior to the big expansion with the Into the Light update. This new update brings with it a ton of stuff, but the most notable being a new horde mode activity that looks pretty sick. The update will go live on April 9th, so maybe this is the perfect excuse for the bros to start getting reacquainted with Destiny yet again. Lots of game updates in this news block, so let's keep it going with Power World teasing its first raid boss. There's not too many details on this other than the raid boss will be this pal called Belenoir, and it's the first real endgame raid. No release date was given, but you can probably expect it pretty soon since the last batch on the game was over two weeks ago. 
Lastly, Enshrouded not only released their first big update, but also detailed their content roadmap. Experiencing this update firsthand, I can tell you it's pretty great. The new Hollow Halls dungeons are amazing, you can ping on the map, you can sit on furniture, and much, much more. The roadmap teases some pretty exciting developments like world events and a weather system, so go take a look for yourself. We're absolutely loving Enshrouded, and it's generally been a ton of fun to see its early assets journey, so definitely check it out for yourself if you haven't already. Switching over to news on upcoming titles, we have a title that actually already released, but then they took it back and were like, nah, you thought we released, but we were just testing you and now it is releasing. So here it is in the upcoming titles instead of the release titles. Jokes aside, Gabe and I actually loved Multiverse back when it sort of launched and played a ton of it. Were we ranked in the top 1000 players in the world? Heck yes we were, and it was awesome. So we're definitely hopping in once again when it relaunches on the 28th with better performance, updated visuals, and a PvE mode. We'll be sure to check out and let you know how it goes. Hyperlight Breaker is getting even more positive buzz thanks to some previews from major outlets like IGN and its announcement that the early access will be here this summer. No firm release date, but we're excited nonetheless. It's always caught our eye visually, but to hear it also plays well is music to our ears. Excited to see when we can get our hands on it and let you know our thoughts. And finally, to wrap up this new section, let's take a look at any new game announcements revealed this March. This shouldn't have been a surprise to us, but developer Nine Dots finally revealed Outward 2. So Outward is a bit of an indie darling for us. It's a game with a ton of potential, so I had always hoped that they would build on it with a sequel. No release date was given, but we have this teaser to give us a glimpse, as well as a very early preview on IGN. So check both of those out for yourselves. In another surprise, Nine Dots revealed yet another co-op game, this time a 4-player online co-op survival RPG called Witherbloom. Interesting enough, Nine Dots is not developing the title, but rather publishing it through their new Nine Dots publishing label. The game looks pretty cool even in this pre-alpha trailer, so I'm excited to hear more. Another seasoned developer unveiling a new title, take a look at Brighter Shores. You might not see the resemblance at first, but this is a new MMORPG coming from the developer behind RuneScape, a game very dear to us 90s kids. Interested to see how this one is received, right now it only has a release window for quarter 3 later this year. Only two more stories before we wrap this up, there's a new Dungeons & Dragons game in development and it's coming from the team behind Disney's Dreamlight Valley. The game will be a survival sim game, there's no name or much to go off save for this image, but if you like Dreamlight Valley, then you're bound to like this game I'm sure. Okay, let's wrap up this episode with some pretty insane news. Initially, when Spider-Man 2 teased both Miles and Peter as playable protagonists, Andrew and I could only dream of the possibility of a co-op mode. Those hopes were quickly dashed, but recently we learned that there was in fact a co-op Spider-Man game in development at Insomniac titled Spider-Man The Great Web. Imagine a co-op Spider-Verse game and that's essentially what these leaked trailers showed. And now imagine living with the truth that the game was cancelled and will likely never get a co-op Spider-Man game. Welcome to the club, yeah it sucks. Alright gang, it's time to close out for the month, but we want to thank you for watching and joining us. If this video helped you keep up to date on everything you need to know, be sure to give it a like and consider subscribing, and if you want to go a step forward, you can always follow us on our socials, join our Discord, check out our merch store, or even peruse our Patreon. Yep, here at the Co-op Bros, we've got it all. And of course, a special shout out to our current patrons, you all are the best. We'll catch you next time on another episode of the Co-op Bros.